But if you guys um, explore more that section, actually sometimes it can also read out the text on your phone. That's true. And I'm sure that because people with disabilities, they are the mi minorities. Mm -hmm. So most of us are not familiar as to why those kind of features are important to mm -hmm. some people. Mm -hmm. Right, Brandon? Yes, yeah, that's true, that's true. So with that being said, of course, the Content Forum announced a successful registration of the Content Code 2022, Nabil. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, which is aimed at fostering a robust landscape of content here in Malaysia, where freedom of expression and responsibility can coexist. Do you think so? No. Well, that is a definitely a tough question, but I think they should coexist. Mm -hmm. So last year, amid the COVID-19 pandemic, of course, the Content Forum embarked on a wonderful journey, which is to revamp the entire code to ensure it remains resilient and aligned with global best practices for everybody here in Malaysia when it comes to the gatekeepers and content creators, etc. Now, public consultation as well took place from September to December last year, where everybody contributed to this idea where aspiration to improve accessibility of content for persons with disabilities. So that's why we're here and we're going to talk about it, Nabil. So right. let's introduce our guests. All right. So person with disabilities, digital space barriers, we'll be talking about that with associate professor Professor Dr. Aida Mohtar from the Department of Communication from the International Islamic University of Malaysia. Welcome to the show, uh, Dr. Aida. And also we're we'll talking about to Mr. Kenny Ong, the Chairman of the Content Forum. Welcome to the show, Kenny. Thank you. How are you guys feeling today? Good, wonderful, yeah, great. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a quite a gloomy start over there. <laughs> I, I would say so, and it's a bit cold in the studio, yeah, isn't it? Exactly, that's one, and they look like they have a lots to share, brother. When <laughs> Abil, so it's like, yeah, can we just get on to the first question? Come on, Abil. Yeah, but in Malaysia, okay. it's always better to be cold rather than to be hot. Oh, definitely. So I prefer this anytime. Oh my gosh, yeah. I can't yeah. stand. It. Yeah, I can't stand it. How am I going to go? You can watch Manchester United. Oh, well, you need, you need, This is how you practice, bro. Oh my god. All right. All right. So, uh, Mr. Kenny. Uh, so we know that access to information is important to all Malaysians uh, because we're all quite relying on news updates through the media and other platforms. Maybe you can tell us what prompted the content forum to include the new provisions for persons with disabilities in the new content code 2022 and tell us more about the provision itself. Okay, before I go there, I'd like to take a little bit of time to explain what the content forum and content code is so that the audience will know. So the content forum is an organization under the purview of the MCMC, mm -hmm. where we all are, um, and it is actually you know, like you say, it's a gatekeeper, right? So the content forum um, consists of all the industry practitioners, content creators, content publishers, media broadcasting, so RTM uh, and all are actually part of the content forum. And what we do is we self-regulate mm -hmm. together with MCMC. So we create our own rules, our own guidelines with the advice of MCMC. So what we do is that, so everything that you see and hear today uh, via TV, radio, digital in Malaysia mm -hmm. is actually regulated through the content code. So it's very important. Uh, uh, and the content code, what we have done is that the past year uh, when we did the research, you know, one of the main things that we say, what, what do you want to do to improve the content code for Malaysia right? mm -hmm. and to improve the standard of content that we want to bring to Malaysians? And one of the key things is this topic called PWD or Persons with Disabilities. Before that, it was not specific. Uh, but what we have done is that we have actually added a new whole section mm -hmm. to actually give content creators and broadcasters new guidelines to say, we should do this so that we include more of the PWDs together with access to content. Mm -hmm. Because before, if you don't do that, then what happens is that then most of your content is only given to what we call like people like us who don't have uh, disabilities. But what I think together you, it was unanimous and, and MCMC agreed as well. Mm -hmm. They changed their guidelines and policies to say mm -hmm. that we want to include more of the PWDs so that they have access to information. Like us talking now, um, a lot of people with P, the PWDs actually they can't hear what we are mm. saying. Right, right. Mm. Right? Mm. So um, they can only see. So mm. if you don't have subtitles or somebody doing sign, language. sign languages, mm -hmm. they don't know what we are talking about. So they miss out on this information. So mm -hmm. that is important to us. All right. So, uh, Prof, I want to ask you one right. question. Mm -hmm. uh, are we like way back or left behind, as you would say, when it comes to communicating with uh, persons with disabilities? What's your point of view? Um, I think more can be done, mm -hmm. basically, um, to get more content creators and broadcasters to include uh, persons with disabilities as they're coming up with their programs and, you know, content and so forth. Um, because, um, you know, there's always something to do. Someone, you know, you need to have sign language people coming on board and that 
costs money. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the recent webinar we had, uh, of course, on this was that I know people were complaining, you know, uh, broadcasters were complaining that, you know, it, it requires uh, money and, uh, you know, they don't have that and so forth. Um, in terms of my students, because I'm an educator, I do ask them, encourage them to include either a sign language interpreter, um, a sign language person, or a um, captions, mm -hmm. right? And I give them marks for it. And having a sign lang a person doing sign language on in on their webinars is going to be expensive, I understand. Mm -hmm. So I encourage them to have captions. Mm -hmm. And I teach them how to do it. And I, I, you know, press on the idea that they have to make sure it's correct. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not nice to have people turning yeah, on yes. these captions and then by default, they are, you know, like nonsense. I mean, it, you have to be sensitive about this. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So I get them to generate the captions and then correct them and then upload them um, you know onto YouTube right together with their videos and also translate um, the Malay language speakers into um, English the you know and so forth so the thing is it's they have to make the effort mm -hmm. because if not you are excluding them and it's not fair mm -hmm. you know how would you feel if you were excluded from anything it doesn't yes, feel true. good mm -hmm. um, and you know um, it's something noble yeah and um, you know and we're not going to be able-bodied forever by right. the way we mm -hmm. ourselves as we grow older we could become you know, disable ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So the sensitivity in, in ensuring that there's inclusion is really important to inculcate mm -hmm. in the students. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And in broadcasters and content creators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kan Nabil, kawan tak ajak pun, we can get also a bit of offended and stuff like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> what makes you think, yeah. yeah. That because sometimes we don't put ourselves in their positions. Exactly. So we are not aware of what they had to go through. Yeah. So it's good to know that some of these uh, changes have been implemented. Like yeah. for, uh, for example, Google, Mm -hmm. uh, some of their devices, they have an auto caption feature in which whatever audio that is being produced by the gadget, right. there will be subtitled. Mm -hmm. So even if it's noises, like train noise, it will say in the caption, train noises. Oh, so wow. that's good for um, people with disabilities. Exactly. And it's good to know this kind of provision exists. So yeah. maybe, Mr. Kenny, maybe Kenny, you can um, explain to us what are the other provisions that uh, Content Forum has had has um, talked about and maybe how can these help with people with disabilities? Okay, so this is a Sunday morning, so I won't go into technicality, otherwise you'll be, you go to sleep. <laughs> so there are two keywords here that the content code um, specifies with regards to PWDs, right? Number one is neutrality. I'll explain it a little bit. Mm. Number two is accessibility. Mm. So neutrality means the content itself, we must refer to PWDs in a neutral manner. In other words, there are a lot of content creators uh, on digital space, actually not on broadcast, but on digital, who rightly or wrongly, they will use um, words that are offensive mm -hmm. about PWDs. You know, you know those, I won't mention it here, but mm. they, will, they will use terms to talk about a person with disability, whether they are blind or they are deaf or mm. you know, they can't walk. So those kind of terms in the content code, we say you cannot use. Mm. Because, so when we, when we refer to PWDs, we must refer them to in a neutral manner. It's like they are like one of us. Right. Okay, so, um, so that's one key thing. So all content creators have to abide by this because we want it to be neutral for them so that when they see or hear about them represented in the content itself, they are, there is no bullying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is no you know, uh, terms that make them feel bad about themselves. So that's, that's number one. The second thing about the content code is accessibility, which means we are asking all the content creators to do their best. Mm -hmm. This is uh, publishers, content creators, media broadcasters like us, mm. um, to provide as much access as we can, mm. as we improve along, so that more and more PWDs can have access to the information. Actually, we start, the most important one is actually with news. Right. Because above all else, that one is critical. So when you have something like COVID-19 pandemic, right, mm -hmm. we want to announce certain things, that one is 100% of Malaysians must know. You, they, you cannot, you cannot like, say that, oh, this one, because they are PWD, they don't have the access to it. So the news is very important. So when you have a flood somewhere, mm -hmm. they must know about it, right? So this so news is where we start with, uh, and we actually specify it quite well within the news realm. Then we say, actually, as we move along, we want all other content creators and broadcasters and digital platforms mm -hmm. to uh, make it more accessible to PWDs. Mm -hmm. So these are the two key things, neutrality, accessibility. All right. Uh, Prof, uh, a question for you, Prof. Uh, when it comes to ac uh, accessing uh, content out there, 
in this right. landscape mm -hmm. in Malaysia. New media, traditional media, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In terms of subtitles and um, and and more that comes to actually try to relay or communicate with persons with disabilities, mm -hmm. what else can be done actually besides? Putting the caption, right. the subtitle, mm -hmm. audio transcription, visual mm -hmm. transcription. Right. Are there anything else that can be done? Well, the IIUM website, we can even increase the font size. For example, mm -hmm. have you know the underlining of links. Right. Um, and uh, you know uh, contrast, better contrast. Mm -hmm. Other than that, um, you know have representation. Get these PWDs to contribute to content creation. Mm -hmm. You know, get them to become journalists, right? Mm -hmm. TV program right, hosts. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, don't get them to you know just. Uh, sit around and look and and criticize and right. tell everybody else that it's not fair that you know this has been you know they, they've been treated unfairly mm -hmm. but get them involved mm -hmm. so that you know once we see them working with us and we realize we have to be sensitive to their needs mm -hmm. so I think it's important to get them involved in the content creation Mm -hmm. as well and to be hosts and journalists and I've also asked um, encouraged our IIUM FM for example TV um, you know IIUM today to incorporate them as well yeah. um, and so that they can focus on um, you know, topics that they understand better than us yeah they can share their experiences better and then you know when we had a student in our class who was on a wheelchair you know everybody stood up and you know let the student come Come in, yeah. you know, pave the way. It's, it's such a beautiful thing. Mm. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, there's no loss in doing that. It's, mm. it's, you know, it doesn't require a lot of effort. It doesn't require a lot of time. It, it shows that you are you are sensitive and there's nothing wrong with that. That mm. should be, you know, nurtured. Mm. In the West, you know, getting up on a bus in Australia, for example, when I was there in 1999, getting up on, you know, when you're in a, on a bus, it was a, a moment where everybody was on a bus and, and then suddenly people started, and it stopped somewhere, and then people started moving about, going out, doing something, and I realised they were helping this wheelchair-bound lady come on board. Wow. And I was like surprised to see this at that time because you know I didn't know what to do and so forth. But when I'm back here, you know, at this uh, you know phase in in uh, this time, then I realize that we can help. We should help, and it starts in universities, you know, in schools, in universities, yes. at home, even before that. Mm -hmm. And a lot can be done. More needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's mm -hmm. it's nice to hear these kind and grand gestures. Yes, because I think it goes back to education as well mm -hmm. um, yeah. like what you know like for example I just found out about autism some mm -hmm. years back I didn't know I had nothing I had no idea about what, what autism is but now I'm more aware um, at the same time I remember an experience in a mama uh -huh. I saw a person fell mm -hmm. because of a sheet seizure and I didn't know what to do because I am not aware yeah. so I'm, I'm I'm guessing a lot of people out there are not aware as well so Kenny how, how do we increase this awareness I think all of us, as part of the content forum, content creators, even us, you know, who are part of the content creation, will need to create more content mm -hmm. that educates people about, you know, about the the space of what we call the PWD or person with disability, right? And and you know, and like what Professor said, to also include them into our content as well. So both it goes both ways, right? But uh, again, the the important point here is to. Number one, to make sure that all our content is accessible as much as we can mm -hmm. to the PWDs. And PWDs is a wide spectrum because yeah. some are mm -hmm. you know, blind, some are deaf. It's actually, like you said, mm -hmm. uh, autism. So it's actually quite a wide spectrum for us to take care of. But I think for us as Malaysians, we just need to do our best right. mm -hmm. and make a best effort to improve. Uh, we're not asking for perfect. We're just asking for everybody to do a little bit more mm -hmm. every day to make sure that we are giving more access to people with PWD, you know, so and also to have content that is accessible to them. And like I said, to us, to me, I'll be happy if people just reduce all the negative wordings that people use on with people with disabilities, right? So that will be crucial mm. for all of us. That will be crucial. What about you, Prof? What do you think about this? How can we improve awareness? 
improve awareness. Um, like for me, my students have been asked to do assignments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, webinars, for example, they've been asked to approach persons with disabilities or parents who have children with disabilities mm -hmm. or experts who can talk on PWDs and then invite them over and um, organize webinars um, in pairs and then um, ask questions, you know, have like a more um, you know, engaging conversation mm -hmm. uh, with them and uh, talk about you know, their experiences, yeah, correct, knowledge sure. and so forth. Mm -hmm. And though, and then I would check their questions to make sure that, you know, the language is appropriate. So mm -hmm. before that, we talk about teaching them the technical aspects, how to, you know, set up the whole thing. Um, and then basically how to do the captions, how to upload, and also the language, the language use, the content, what you can ask, what you can't ask, um, who to approach, you know, um, to encourage them to approach first these people that they've identified Identified, and then if they can't, you know, find anybody, then I come in to help. Mm. Um, the whole idea is to get them to do things on their own, to be sensitive, you know, to these people's needs, and uh, to create the awareness that we need. Yeah, and they've had fun, and we've had this done uh, for a few semesters, and uh, yeah, it, it was a good thing, and also got my writing students to write for our newspaper as well, write on the webinars for the newspaper. So we'd have like each semester 15 articles mm -hmm. because we'd have about 15 webinars. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of awareness, you know, that we're creating in the university. Um, we also have architecture students oh, wow. who've okay. come up with designs, you oh. know, for our community-based rehab center mm. that's coming up. We've gotten a 1.6 million grant from the Ministry of Higher Education recently mm -hmm. and we're setting up a center for children with disabilities, right? So the thing is, we've had our architecture students come in recently. I've, I've evaluated mm -hmm. their five designs and it's lovely seeing <laughs> them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, thinking about, you know, the children with autism, the rooms they'll be using, doing research. It's just wonderful to see this. Mm -hmm. So it's not only, you know, sitting down reading on, on this, right? Mm -hmm. um, but being involved in the sense, you know, asking by asking, Asking yourself, how can I be involved? Mm -hmm. I'm in architecture, hence I can help in this way. I'm in comm, yeah. My students are in comm. They can create awareness, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's it's a good thing. You know, um, students love it. They love it. Right, right. You just show them the way, and they they will, <laughs> you know, do well. Mm -hmm. So it's it's you know it's our obligation, our moral obligation to do this. But I, I do have some hope for future generations though, because if you uh, if you notice, mm -hmm. like the caption feature on TikToks, because when they do the videos, they put on the caption. And at first I didn't know why they were doing that, but yeah, apparently it, because to aid the like people with disabilities. Right. Yeah, it feels like it's just an update. Oh, this is actually a brand new feature. But Nabil actually, when I came to the studio today and he told me that that's actually the purpose of it, and I was like, wow. Mm. Yeah, I think we've actually come so far. Yes. All right, Kenny. And uh, do you think that actually approaching persons with disabilities could be a tough one in that sense because mm -hmm. they uh, might refrain themselves from, you know, associating themselves with us, mm -hmm. you get what I mean? Because mm -hmm. they're probably shy, they're probably scared. Yeah. What do you think about this? Yes, um, it is. It's We want to include them. But do they want to be included? <laughs> yes. is, a, is one thing. Yes. And uh, I think it's about, our yeah. part, right? We need to be there first to tell them, like, hey, come join me, right? Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, with my students, uh, we have uh, a blind student, for example, in our kulia, mm. and uh, he likes to go to the canteen and so forth. And I tell my students, if you see him in the canteen, sit next to him, say hi. He's yeah. just like us. Why not? Yeah, he wants to socialize, you know. Um, don't be scared, you know what I mean? And then, um, you know, just sit with him, have a drink, say hi. If he's not comfortable with something, you know, he, he will say, you yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, it's just like talking to somebody who, but I mean, the person can't see. And you have that advantage, isn't it, of having your eyesight perfect. And the thing is, why don't you use it in the right way? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's the whole idea, isn't it? Yeah, help true. him out, you yeah. know, show him the way where, yeah. whenever you can. Yeah. So I do encourage them. Um, but of course, at the end of the day, they have to do it. Yeah. We can't be micromanaging this, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so we can give marks in assignments. Um, you know, we could go further than that, of course, um, to encourage them incentives, you know, um, encourage them to write about the experiences helping a person with right. a disability. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. All, All right. right. Thank Looks you. Like, yeah, we have run out of time, but of course, mm. it has been great when it comes to this wonderful chat. How a media out there in Malaysia as well can improve the accessibility of content mm. to everybody. When we say everybody, we literally mean everybody. So, thank you so much for joining us, Associate Professor Dr. Aida Mokta, Department of Communication, International Islamic University of Malaysia, IUM. Thank you so much. And also, Kenny Ong, Chairman of the Content Forum. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting us. Thank All right. you so much.